Now, I know a lot of you guys already know this. I've been dropping hints along the way, but today is the day that I'm officially going to announce it. The fundraiser is down below. You guys can click the link. You guys can check it out. And we're asking for the price of a single haircut. What my plan is to do is once we have enough money, we're going to go out and we're going to find some people who are in need and we're going to pay off their barber tuitions in full. I really hope to do this for as many people as possible, but without you guys, it definitely couldn't be possible. And without the help of the sponsors, it definitely couldn't be possible. So we got to thank these sponsors, man. So first and foremost, you know, we got to thank Gamma, man. They make a lot of stuff possible. They've been really taking care of your boy. And if you guys need to order anything from Gamma, you need clippers, you need trimmers, you need some sick new blades. They got a lot of cool stuff, man. Use my code Eddie and you'll save 10%. And also I want to thank Booked In, another sponsor of mine. If you guys are looking for a great scheduling app, check out Booked In. I got them in the link down below. Thirdly, I also want to thank 614 Barber Supply because anything that Gamma doesn't have, whenever you're going to step outside of Gamma, whenever you're going to get something, use code Eddie with 614 Barber Supply. They're a great group of guys that's supporting local. They'll ship fast. They got great products and they got a great selection. Okay, before this video starts, man, I want to preface this by saying that there is a lot of unrealistic expectations that are going to be placed on you when you go to Instagram, Facebook. You see all these photos that are doctored up. You see all these enhancements that are being put on these cuts. And it leads you to feel like your fades aren't good enough, like your work is not good enough. And the truth is, this stuff is still relatively new. Um, for years and years and years, barbers did excellent work before all this stuff. So not every fade is going to be super blurry or this crazy thing. Like, a lot of fades will have mistakes in them. And a lot of people are going to trick you, man, because they're going to take a picture of the most perfect portion of the cut they're not going to show you their mistakes so don't let that get down on you don't let yourself feel bad about that because it's really just a big joke man you can do good work in this business and you could succeed for a long time and anybody can learn it trust me i've seen, I've people, seen people learn people it from learn scratch, scratch. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the YouTube Barber Academy. The army's growing strong. We're almost at 100K and growing. And if you want to enlist, all you got to do is click that subscribe button. We got over 300 videos to help you learn all things barbering. And with that being said, we finally reached phase four, the blend. I know you guys have been asking for it. So in phase one, we covered all the prep work. We covered how to use the electric shavers and how to debulk and get that hair set up properly. In phase two, we covered how to use clipper over comb, how to connect the top to the sides in the parietal ridge area. And in phase three, we're going to talk about how to cut the top. So if you guys haven't seen phase three, go ahead and check out the phase three video. Now, if you guys are ready, we're gonna travel into the blend and we're going to start right here. So all this has been set up so I could break it up into multiple videos to really dive into each point and get you guys to really understand what we're doing. So if you've been following your way through the six phases, we've covered how to get to this point. We're starting here. All our electric shaver work is done. The top is cut properly and our clipper over comb is done as well. The skin line is already put in. And if you guys need help with your skin line positioning, I suggest you guys check out this video right here. I'm gonna link it and you guys could check out the skin line positioning video. You can make sure that not only are you putting your skin lines in where they're supposed to be, you're putting them in accurately and you're using the right skin line for the right type of cut. Now, with that being said, let's go on forward. So what are the tools we're gonna need? So I spent a great deal of time explaining tools and setup and I'll point you here if you need to catch up. But for now, I'm just going to say that you're going to need a fading clipper, you're going to need a fade blade, preferably a good set of guards. My personal favorite is the Gamma Dubs. However, if you're using the wall or if you're using the Andis, all that's going to be fine. It's going to work out just fine for you. Now, I know there's going to be this question. Somehow it seems to get asked all the time, Ed, how do I do a fade without the half guard and without the one and one half guard? And I'm going to tell you this. If you're taking it seriously and you really want to learn how to become a barber, go spend the $5 and buy yourself those two guards. Now, assuming that we have everything we need, we're ready to get started. Okay. The guards are not going to help you if you don't understand these key concepts. Each manufacturer has worked hard to deliver you the tools to blend out any line. But a mistake I seen all the time when I was teaching students at the school is that students tend to leave the head too much and they manipulate the distance of the guard and they didn't really understand what they were doing. Now, it's not always easy to know where flat is. Now, you see I have this gamma zero on and you can actually see it's really flat so it's really easy to know where flat is with this one. 
However, I have the wall number one guard on here and notice how it actually has a little curve in it. So with this curve, flat is actually not here. It's going to be here. So each time that we are holding the clipper too far back or too far up, we're manipulating that distance and we're changing it and we're going to make it harder to get the blend done. So do your best to hold it flat and work your way through the process. You can learn how to take risks later when it makes sense, but especially when you're learning, just hold it flat and make sure that you're getting the most out of each guard. Okay, so behind me, you're gonna notice that I got this little fade scale. The fade scale is only gonna go up to a number two because beyond a number two, we use clipper over comb to blend into the top and we started this haircut with our line already in and we've already addressed how to work with the trimmers. And we've already addressed how to work with the electric shavers. So basically, I like to use this triangular shape to help you guys understand how these guards work together. Now, the idea is we wanna take very small jumps and that's what's gonna facilitate this really nice smooth blend. That's what's gonna allow this hair to get gradually longer without creating any issues. Now, if you're making mistakes and you're making lines in your blend, your, your triangle is gonna look a little bit more like this. You're gonna have little bumps and little dents and this is on like a microscopic level looking at the side of the head. However, if we understand the process and we understand what step is both above and below, we're going to be better informed barbers. We're gonna know better what's going on. So obviously the closest thing we can get to a trimmer is our closed taper. That's the very next step up. Open the lever and we're at an open taper. Next step up from that is a closed half guard. Open the lever, we're at a half open. Now we're gonna go up to the one closed. Open that lever, one open. And so on and so forth until we reach the two. These will all work perfectly with each other, assuming that you give yourself enough room to complete the blend in between each step. The key takeaway here is that we need to make sure that we're making very small jumps into the very next steps. We're not skipping steps. And we also understand what step is above and what step is below the one that we're on so that when we get into some type of troubleshooting, we're gonna be able to fix it. Simply put, there are three ways that you might cut the hair across the grain, against the grain, and with the grain. All clients got unique growth patterns. Some of their hair just goes perfectly back and falls right into place. Some people's hair falls forward, like mine. Some of it juts forward in weird angles. Some people got a bunch of colics. Some people don't have that many colics. So the best way to find out what's going on is to comb through the hair, analyze the growth pattern, so you know how best to hold the clipper. So cutting against the grain is obviously going to leave the hair the shortest, cutting across the grain is going to leave it a little bit longer, and cutting with the grain is going to leave it the longest using that same clipper guard. Cutting with the grain is something you're going to do on that tight, curly, ethnic hair, but cutting with the grain on white hair, it's not gonna do you much good. If I'm dealing with ethnic non-white hair, or just flat out curly hair, uh, there's a few differences I wanna point out. If you cut this type of hair against the grain, it's gonna leave the hair looking light. And in that scenario, the process for the fade doesn't really change too much. However, if we wanna keep some of that wave on top, maintain some of that darkness to help the contrast in our fade, we're gonna cut the hair with the grain. Now, we're gonna comb the hair, we're gonna analyze the growth pattern, and we're gonna do our best to stay with the grain. Also, another advantage here that you have is you actually have a little step in between each step. So as we talked about with these steps, you could actually take any of these steps and apply them with the grain and it's going to be safer. It's going to leave the hair longer and you can always check and see what effect that has. So an example, let's say I want to go on to the next step and it happens to be a number one open. I can take the number one open, cut it down with the grain and see what effects that has. You can follow all your steps with the grain and you can even do the whole blend this way. But you're eventually going to need to flip the clipper right side up and you're gonna to have to remove that skin line. Now going with the grain can help you perfect the blend when it comes to curly hair, but when it comes to straight hair, it's not gonna be of much use. So there's a few strategies that work well for both. Now one of them I wanna talk about is called the crisscross pattern. I like to use this crisscross pattern when I'm blend. And if you notice, I tip my clipper sort of sideways where if my line is here, I'm just taking little steps above it, a little step out of it. So I like to use the crisscross pattern when blending for a few reasons. It cuts across the grain and this can be helpful to hit each area correctly. And two, it also saves you from making those little mistakes because instead of coming up with that whole flat blade and making a mistake this big, you might make a mistake, a very small mistake that's gonna be still very easy to fix and it's definitely not gonna be nowhere near as noticeable. So how to move the clipper properly, all right? Believe it or not, there is a motion here and you can actually practice this on a mannequin and you can get good at this before you even take it to the field. So think about how we would use an eraser on a pencil. So if I drew this line, right, and I wanted to erase it, I wouldn't do this. That's not doing nothing, right? I would actually just work it back and forth 
until this line starts to go away. And then this line's gonna disappear, right? Well, it's the same thing with your clippers. So I know that it's not gonna cut on the downstroke, so I can keep this anchored on the head, which is also gonna keep me steady. It's going to improve my accuracy and it's going to work out the line. So the crisscross pattern and keeping it flat and working it back and forth. This is the motion. Now the motion I don't wanna see you guys doing is just leaving the head too much because this is something that a lot of people think it's just some type of flick of the wrist. Like we're just sitting here getting lucky over and over again. Like that's not the case. Like really good barbers are using really good techniques to get the same results over and over again and maintain consistency. So how should I approach every fade? Okay, so this is the base process that I'm going to recommend for every fade, every haircut, um, just for a basic base process. Now you can move away from this as time goes on, as you get more comfortable, you get more confident, maybe you experiment with some stuff that works for you. But trust me, this system will work perfectly. Let's address this real quick. We got the two on the top and we got the skin on the bottom. So the very first thing that I'm going to do in my process is I'm going to open my clipper up all the way and I'm going to make a second guideline. Now this guideline, I'm going to travel around the whole head and it's going to be an open taper guideline because I'm going to put this clipper in the open position, which is going to leave the hair longer. If I close this, it's going to cut closer. So it's going to be shorter. When I have this in the open position, I'm going to set in my guideline. I'm going to do that around the whole head. And once I'm done with that, now I can actually begin blending out this line. Now this line was put in with a trimmer and that's five zeros. Assuming that I have this clipper set up correctly, it's going to easily be able to remove that harsh line. With a lot of clippers, there's actually clicks on the side and it's gonna be really easy to help me explain this. So the way that I'm gonna begin taking out this line is I'm going to click this lever one time. So once I've clicked this lever one time, I'm going to stay just underneath where I was in that previous step, holding it flat using my crisscross method and I'm going to do the same thing again. Close it one more, take it just where I was in that previous step, take it one more, all the way down until I'm all the way closed. As I do these steps all the way to the fifth click when I have it entirely closed, you're going to see that this skin line starts to dissipate and this blend starts to come together. So the very next step that we're going to do is we're gonna skip the half guard and we're gonna put on the number one. I'm going to put it in the open position and I'm going to create another guideline all the way around the head. And I'm gonna repeat the process. Each time I click it, I'm staying a little bit lower, staying a little bit lower, until that's entirely wiped out. Okay, so basically what just happened is my blend is looking pretty good from skin all the way up into the number one open, but I did skip the half guard, which caused the very faint line to be left over. So I'm gonna put on my half guard, I'm gonna put it in the open position, I'm gonna see if that gets it out, that probably won't, I'm gonna begin closing it down, closing it down, using that crisscross method, holding it flat, and it's going to take out these lines. Now that I've got that half guard done, I got that whole step done, my haircut is looking really good from skin to a number one open. So the reason why I skipped the half guard is actually pretty simple. The half guard actually has got a little bit of overlap, which means that if I put the number one in the closed position and I put the half in the open position, believe it or not, the half in the open position cuts a little bit longer, which means that there's just a tiny bit of overlap there. If I jump straight to the half guard, I might bring the blend a little bit too high. And as you can see, there's only a faint amount of hair left over that needs to be touched up. So it's just a little bit easier to skip the half and then circle back and clean it up. All right, so the next step's pretty easy. It's gonna take me into the top. This is a 1.5 and I'm gonna put it in the open position. I'm gonna set my next guideline, but it's not really gonna be much of a guideline because a 1.5 taken into a number two is going to blend that hair out. I'm gonna close that down and that's gonna get rid of my one. Now, if I have any issues in my blend right now, I am going to circle back. This is something that I wanna hammer home. We're taking very small steps, we're being very thorough, and if our step below is not perfect, then we're not gonna move on. So for instance, if I was working out that trimmer line, and it wasn't coming out after I was done with the open taper and the closed taper, I'm gonna return back to the trimmer. If that doesn't do it, I'm gonna go back to the electric shaver. I'm going to jump back before I jump forward. So many times I've seen students beyond step five working on like this one and a half when all this is still jacked up down here and they say they're gonna clean it up later. Well, I know for a fact that most of my haircuts don't need a lot of cleanup because I'm really thorough and if you guys are thorough, you're not gonna have as much cleanup to do either. We did discuss an alternative method in phase one where we put the original line in with a closed taper blade we follow up under that with a trimmer and then we follow up under that with an electric shaver this is something i might do if i'm not sure how the client's hair is going to react so feel free to experiment with this and see how your cut turns out however i will warn you this can still lead to create some harsh guidelines which is why i think it's better that you just learn how to remove these harsh guidelines this way you never have to lack that confidence going into a haircut <laughs> 
Um, you're gonna see this on a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Uh, when you've exhausted all your guards, you followed your process, you were thorough, you've done everything you had to do, you do have to remember this. The head is round and it's full of all types of little dips and depressions and some of the hair has a higher density on one side than it does on the other. That's the amount of hair per square inch. So one way that we could solve that is we could work the corners. All that means is usually I'll put this clipper in the open position and I'm going to not only use just the corner but I'm also going to tip it off of the head slightly. So what it actually looks like is I'm trying to stay away from the hair and I'm seeing if that works. If that doesn't work, I'm going to tip it closer and closer to the head until I got it flat again. Now if that doesn't work, I might close it up all the way, but the only thing you can really do to remove these dark spots is generally to cut them shorter. So don't be afraid to go in there just with the corner and fix them. However, if I was to go into it with the clipper flat and it turns out that this did cut too much and I do have an issue, well then I've just created a huge problem. So that's why we use the corners and we use them to our advantage and we use them to help with all them little dark spots and help with those little mistakes. And don't forget that you have Share Over Comb to help you too. So try to pick the right tool for the job. All right, so I've taught a lot of people how to do this and trust me, you can learn it too. The few things that I'm gonna leave you with is hold your clipper flat, use that crisscross pattern, use them corners when you have to, stay thorough, understand the step that's above you and the step that's below you, and understand how to reach all them little steps throughout your blend and make sure that you're on the right one. Don't be on step three when you're supposed to be finishing with step one, all right? And if you're still struggling to get out that line, most of the time there's only one thing you can do. You're probably going to have to cut it a little bit shorter. I've seen students who were scared to death to take the fade too high, so they left the fade all jacked up. Trust me, nobody wants a fade that's bad, and if you have to bring it a little bit further up to stretch that blend out, if you have to make it look a little bit better, trust me, it's going to look better for the client, and the client will thank you for it. So we know how to do it. We know how to use our shear over comb, we know how to use our clipper over comb, we know how to use our clipper properly, and we know how to cut the top. We could perform a pretty darn good haircut from this point, especially if you guys have worked your way all through the phases, you've done all the homework, and you've been able to do this. Now, here's some of the homework that I'm gonna leave you for this one. I want you guys to take advantage of the canvas you have. When you first start, you might not have a whole lot of people who trust you or who let you work on them. So, there's a few ways that you can do this. Practice these steps by doing some tapers on people. Let's say somebody tells you they want a high skin fade. Well, do a taper on them first then do a low fade on them, then do a mid fade on them, then do the high fade. So use your canvas for what it's worth. The mannequins are really not gonna help you that much at this point because the mannequin just does not have the amount of density that a real person's hair has. However, if you have to, getting some working on the mannequin is definitely not gonna hurt you and I would definitely encourage you to do that if that's your only option. All right, you guys are getting dangerously good. I can feel it. I know that you guys are starting to feel the confidence. You guys understand not only how to remove the skin line, you know how to remove the harsh lines, you know how to blend with your clipper, you know how to use shear over comb, clipper over comb, and how to cut the top with shears. So with that being said, there's only a few things left. We're gonna head over to phase five. And phase five is going to be how to do the edge up and how to do the razor work. So we're gonna learn how to detail them beards, how to properly hold that razor, and we're gonna learn how to do them edge up so we get them nice and crispy so they're looking and good and they're ready to go if you guys think i did a nice job on this video if you appreciate the work that went into it do me a favor and drop the comment fire eddie's army down below let's sound off in the comments and let's help this video grow don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you guys can be notified when videos like this drop and with that being said i'll catch you guys over there in the phase five video peace